Well, good morning. We're going to be talking about the Romans Road today. Uh, I don't know where this came from, this Romans Road terminology, but I would venture to say it likely came from uh, Baptist theology or Baptist teachings. Um, I was raised Baptist. I really consider myself more to just be a Christian today and don't necessarily, I don't associate or disassociate with Baptists. I often uh, will practice my faith in Baptist churches, but I really take a focus more on being a Christian, being a follower of Christ. That is where my focus is versus my religion or my denomination or how I practice my faith. But this Romans Road is something that I was taught within uh, Baptist churches. And I want to share with you all today. I'm going to talk about the importance of it. So I have been blessed um, to be in the family of God and to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. In my life, I've shared it with thousands of people in the thousands. And I've seen hundreds of people saved. I've personally witnessed hundreds of people ask Jesus to save them. Uh, in one uh, situation, once I was uh, speaking at a funeral and uh, shared the gospel there, and there was over 20-something people. I think it was tw somewhere between 23 and 27 people. I, I know it's been several years, and I don't remember, but somewhere between 23 and 27 people got saved in that one uh one service there as I was speaking at this funeral, but I've seen hundreds of people come to know the Lord, and it has been such a blessing. Uh, and this is because I was taught how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is what I want to share with you. Uh, Christians today, in today's society, it is so easy to take a focus on the negativity that's around us and the messages that we're constantly hearing through media, political and otherwise. All these negative things, there's so many angry people, there's so many people that are just at the end of their rope. Are there not? And with this, as Christians, we should take a focus more now, today, on spreading the gospel than we ever have. Why? Because we are one day closer to the end. What, Whenever that is, we are one day closer today. And so time is going to run out at some point for people to hear the gospel and to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know what your personal testimony is. I don't know if you know the Lord already as a Christian or if you don't know him. If you don't know him, listen. Listen in to our teaching today. And the Bible says, Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. But if you do know the Lord, there is no greater message than we can broadcast. There is no greater message than we can proclaim or preach is the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he's done. If you know the Lord, then you, I'm sure he's done some great and mighty things in your life. I know he has in mine. I was just thinking yesterday, I don't know what I would do without him. I do not know what I'd do without him. I do I have no idea where I would be without the truth. And this is the truth that makes us all free, that will set us, any of us free, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So listen up today. If you want to learn how to share the gospel or how I've shared the gospel with people, I've just testified to you. I've seen hundreds of people come to know the Lord. I've, uh, I, it's probably in the thousand, you know, and somewhere around in there of people that's come to know the Lord that I've witnessed myself because I've shared the gospel with them. Um, and so I have, I have different things that I use in scripture and different things that I share with people. And just like if you shared the same with me, we could influence each other for the better and, um, and have greater and better communication as we're trying to reach the loss for Jesus Christ. So, don't be bored today by our teaching of the Romans Road. If you are already a Christian, the purpose for you to listen today is to have better opportunity, better techniques, to be better um, studied in sharing the truth of the gospel. So let's go to the Romans Road today. But before we open up 
in Romans. I did want to share with you all in John 10, 28. Um, I'm going to actually turn there because if I don't, I'm going to end up uh, saying another verse. I believe it's uh, the one, and I give unto them eternal life. I'm pretty sure that's the one, but I just want to make sure I don't. Sometimes I'll, I'll get verses mixed up. So I'm going to look here in John uh, chapter 10, verse 28. It says, Yes, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is the words of Jesus Christ. Once you are in his hand, you cannot be plucked out by any man, not yourself, not another person. You can't be taken out. And he says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. It's a gift that is given to us by Jesus of eternal life. Now, how do we receive that, right? How do we receive that eternal life? Well, let's go. Let's go down the Romans road together today. And I want to share with you four very important truths that is so important for people to understand. And it helps them eat more easily come to know Christ when they see these truths in the Word of God. So Romans chapter 3, verse 23, we're going to go to first. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, I've met a lot of people in my life I've shared this with, and most all of them, most every single one of them, have always communicated to me that they know that they are a sinner. But the very first thing that people must know is that they are a sinner. Most of them know this. There's been a few that felt like they were pretty good people and they didn't really have much, you know, bad on them. And so sometimes I'll take them to a passage in Revelations that says, And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. See, and then they understand that just even a little white lie when they were maybe a child, you know, that that includes them, right, in that passage in Revelation. I believe that's in chapter 22, but I, don't quote me on that because I can't remember right now. But I'll take them to that passage if they don't understand. But like I said, probably 99.5% of people that I've shared the gospel with do agree with the truth of the word of God when it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, as Romans 3.23 says. And then the second thing that we need to know, that you need to know if you don't know the Lord or that you need to share and communicate to people as you're sharing the gospel, is because of their sin, they owe a debt for it. They owe their own wage, as the scripture says in Romans 6, 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Second thing people need to understand is that they owe the debt for their sin. They, that we each owe our own personal debt for the things that we have done wrong. And most people have no problem saying, well, of course, I owe my own debt. But this is truth of the scripture. And the third thing that people need to know, as I have shared with y'all, there's four main things that we really need to know when we go down this Romans road. The third thing is, is that Jesus has already paid that debt. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ came to pay the payment for sinners. Sometimes I don't use Romans 5, 8. I'll use John 3, 16. That says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to pay the price for our sins that we might have eternal life in heaven one day. That's what he did. And so if we take this little journey down the Romans road, we need to understand that we are sinners, that we owe the debt for our sin, and that Christ has already paid it. But what's the fourth thing? The fourth thing is, is that we must confess that Jesus is Lord. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That same chapter in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, For whosoever 
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means anyone. When you study that word, whosoever, it literally means anyone. So I always tend to, as I'm sharing the gospel with people in this way, and especially if they've allowed me to share this much with them, I say, you know what? That whosoever, when you study it out, there's no strings attached to the word whosoever. So therefore, what it means is it doesn't say for whosoever has never done this, 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 or this. And it also doesn't say for whosoever does do this, 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 and this. It literally means anyone. And so you can share down the Romans road these four simple things that people can know that they have eternal life with Jesus Christ by admitting they're a sinner, by admitting they owe the debt for their sin, by acknowledging Jesus has paid the debt, and by confessing he is Lord. They may not be able to speak it. It's a, it's a heart matter, Scripture says. And sometimes people think that they can work their own way to heaven, and I, I will share another passage of Scripture with them in, in Ephesians chapters in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 it says for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast I share this with people who who think that they're good enough maybe to go to heaven I say you know your works can't take you to heaven they just can't the word tells us that our good deeds and our righteousness, our righteousnesses are even considered filthy rags, God, in another passage of scripture. That our good deeds, our righteousnesses are considered filthy rags. We cannot work our own way to heaven. We can't become a part of a religion. That's an action. And, and go to heaven. We can't be baptized of water. This is another action. This is what baptism is, is a profession of your faith. It's, it's what already has started and began in your heart. It's what's already there. Whenever you trusted Jesus as your Savior, it was a heart matter. It was not a work. It was not an action. It was not a deed. Right? According to Scripture. So, these four things I've shared with you, the verses that you can share with others or even that you need to know today in order to know Jesus as your Savior. And you might say, well, how do I, how do I ask him or how do I, how do I just do that? How do I confess to him that he is Lord? It's just, it's that simple. But if you want an illustration of maybe a prayer that you can pray or a way that you can communicate to him, you could say something like this, dear Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. I believe that you died to pay the price for my sin. I believe you are the Lord. I believe you are the Savior of the world. Forgive me, Lord. Be my, be my Savior. Come into my heart today. Save my soul. Something like that. You could say to him. But he knows your heart. And that is what matters. Will today be that day for you? Will you profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Today, will you accept what he has done for you? And will you accept his free gift of salvation? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, the word says. So, I want to give to you all a, a couple illustrations that may help you when you're sharing the gospel with people. Uh, the first one is the thief on the cross. You know, some people believe that there's certain paths and there's certain actions or certain rituals that you need to follow in order to go to heaven. They believe you need to go through certain classes or certain trainings or certain teachings or uh, you got to turn over a new leaf of your life or you've got to become a member of a church or you've got to do this, you got to do that. And they have these these list of things that they believe need to be done in order to receive Christ, in order to go to heaven. Right? 
But I use this teaching and this illustration of the thief on the cross because most people know the story about the old rugged cross and Jesus on the cross and at his side, at both sides, at his left and at his right, there are two thieves. And one of those thieves ends up hearing from Jesus himself as he turns to him and he says, today I will see you in paradise. <laughs> but Jesus turns to one of those thieves. Well, what happened? Well, what happened was, was that thief on the cross called him master. He acknowledged who was there being crucified with him. That is all that he did. He didn't have time now in his life to climb down off the cross and to go into a church house and to do all the rituals and go through all the teachings and go through all the things that people may believe that you need to do in order to go to heaven. No, this thief on the cross simply acknowledged who Jesus was. And this is a very strong story that you can share from the truth of the word of God with others that you are trying to lead to him who maybe are getting confused by culture and religion instead of being influenced by the truths of the word of God. So you can share that story with them about the thief on the cross. That thief didn't have time to become a member of a certain church or religion or whatever. Didn't have time to live a good life. Didn't have time to turn over a new leaf and prove that he was this or that. He didn't even have, he didn't even get baptized. He had no time to be baptized or water. That was an action. That was a work. That is a work. See, baptism of the Holy Spirit is when the Spirit of the living God comes to dwell inside of your body, which becomes the temple of the living God when you profess Jesus as Lord and Savior and you believe and put your faith and trust in Him wholly, not in yourself, not in your religion. And the second and last illustration I want to share with you all today concerning this Romans road is this. Some people believe that you can absolutely know Jesus and lose Jesus. Or that you really didn't know him and that's according to how you live and how you work in your life. And see, that's where the Bible is taken out of context because when you take it as a, as a whole, you have to look at the whole thing and not take different passages out of context which religions have done and that's why I like to stay focused more on the fact that I'm a Christian first before I take any focus on religion I want to take a focus on the truths of the word of God and not what mankind believes or mankind culturally shapes my thinking I want to let the word of God shape my thinking And so this last illustration that I'm going to close with today is this. This is a, a vision that God had given me many years ago, and it is beautiful. So envision this with me, that there's simply a rope that's connected to heaven, and that everyone that trusts Jesus Christ as their Savior has their hand on the rope. And so you see thousands and thousands of people, you can envision this, and know Jesus and their hand is on the rope. But here's what God gave to me. And the very front of the line, at the very head of the rope, is the Christian on this earth right now that lives closest to the design of Jesus, of anyone walking the planet right now. They're at the head. They're like the best Christian in living it out. Right? Now get this, stay with me. This this isn't this isn't anti-Bible. Let's 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 keep it in all in context. And at the very back of the rope is the person whose their hand is on that rope. They know Jesus. 
that their lives are so far from displaying Jesus to the world because of how they live. They've been forgiven. They've been washed in the blood. And friends, somewhere between the back of the line and the front of the line, there we are. Because we know Jesus and he's made us all clean. He's washed all our sin away. And somewhere in the middle, somewhere in between the back and the front of the line, that's where we are. We're on it. We're on that rope. We're on our way. We're on our way to a new day. We know him. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. You see, some people like to draw the line themselves of what God will and won't forgive. The only thing that the scripture says he doesn't forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, and that's when you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. You reject the Holy Spirit. That is blasphemy of his spirit. When you say no, you reject him. That's the only thing that's not forgiven. Everything else is forgivable by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Oh, I'm so thankful for it, aren't you? So thankful that there is no depth that he will not go to save that one lost soul. And you know what? I was going to close with that illustration, but I'm going to give you one more that backs up that particular illustration that God gave to me in the Word. This is out of the Word. This is not just a, a visual illustration. This is from the truths of the Word of God. Jesus is speaking in a parable. He says, If I have a hundred sheep and one should go astray, do I not rejoice more when that one sheep returns to the flock than with the ninety-nine who stayed? So you know what Jesus is saying? He says, I have a hundred sheep and they're mine. They're my hundred. And if one should go astray away from doing the things that they should and staying close to me, and they should go astray. He doesn't say how far astray, whether it's three feet or three miles or three days or three years or 30 years or 30 miles or 30,000 miles away from him. He says, that is my sheep, and my sheep know my voice, and they follow me. But sometimes they stray away from where they really need to be. And he says, if, if that one sheep, when they return back into safety, is still my sheep. See, I have a hundred, he says, in the parable. And if that one should go astray, I am so joyful over that one returning back into safety because that's what the, the purpose of being close to Jesus is. It's, it's, it's our safety and for us to be able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's really hard to do when you're living in sin and living away from him. It's really difficult <laughs> to share the gospel of Christ when we're not living it ourselves. Jesus says, I rejoice more when the one returns back into doing what they should be doing and living how they should be living and being here safely with me in my space close. I rejoice more when that one sheep returns than with the 99 who were doing what they should be. That is the parable of the hundred sheep. Friends, it doesn't matter if you're in the very, 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 very back of the line. Or if you're in the very, very front of the line. It doesn't matter as far as you being on the line. That's what matters, right? For your, your, for your sake, for your own personal sake. But does it matter 
how we live, absolutely. It matters how we live. It matters how we display our Lord and Savior and how we proclaim him, how we go out and we preach the gospel to every creature, the Bible says. You know what preaching is? A proclamation. It's a distribution. It's a sharing. We need to be sharing the gospel of Jesus and it should mean more to us than any other thing in this world, than any other conversation that we can have. It should take precedence. But there's a right way and a wrong way to share it, friends. And not only that, sometimes it is time to build relationships before we share. Because you know, people don't always perceive messages the way that we have intended to share them. Sometimes we need to wait on someone to ask, why are you different? But the Holy Spirit will let us know this. And people should know why we're different without having to ask. The Romans Road. Don't forget it. Don't forget to share it. You know, you could, you could recommend your favorite restaurant to me. You could recommend your favorite brand of clothing. You could recommend your favorite vacation spot. But Christians, how much greater is our Lord? How much greater can we recommend him to others? See, it's easy to go and talk to our neighbors about where we just got back from vacation and how it was so wonderful and maybe recommend to them some restaurants to eat while they're there. It's easy for women to make recommendations about their clothing or what brand they like, or where they shop, or where they got the good deals. By the way, I love Goodwill. <laughs> I love Goodwill and yard selling. I absolutely love it. But we can make these recommendations of all of these things that we have found to be good or nice. And we want other people to know about them. But what about Jesus. When's the last time you recommended him? Is he not the best thing that ever happened to you? He is the best thing that has ever happened to me. It was the best thing about me. Because without him, I'm just a ball of filthy flesh. But in Christ, I am a new creature. And he lives in me. And Christian, if you know him, he lives in you too. God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Don't forget to subscribe to our page if you'd like to hear our new teachings as they come in. And also, when you like or you comment or you share, that helps the teachings to get out to a further audience. So, if you uh, believe that this message was uh, a great teaching or a great message or it helped you in any way, share it with someone else in some way. God bless you all.